All right, so for guitar, we're going to start, I think, with the Bogner. Um, this is the Ecstasy 101B. This is kind of our house amp. It's a really versatile amplifier. It, it can do, it's, a, it's not just a one-trick pony. It does a lot of things, and, and it does a lot of things really great. Um, it's got really nice clean tones, really bell-like clean tones, all the way up to uh, old plexi-type sounds, and then uh, even more kind of a modern metal over-distortion, over-driven type sound as well. So a um, lot to pick and choose from here. It can be uh, tricky to dial things in just because of all the settings, and it can be a little overwhelming, but once you learn the amp and you, you play with it, you really get a feel for it, and you'll, you'll realize that you can achieve a lot with just this one amp. So what we're doing here is, once again, we we're, really want to focus on isolation, but still allow all the musicians to be in the room together. So we've got the head out here, and the cabinet is in the booth over here. So we have tie lines that um, we've run through our studio, so it's speaker level out into a speaker line uh, jack over here on the wall, and then that runs through into this booth. So it allows us to keep the speaker cabinet in its own space, it keeps the player out here with the other musicians, line of sight, visual cues once again. So um, Speaker level is another kind of cable that is okay for really long runs. Right. Um, this run is only about 20 feet, but... Right. Yeah. So, and then here we'll show you the, um, the cabinet. Um, I'm going to turn this, and I'm actually going to move it over here. This is a big Bogner 4x12, and it's, um, the cabinet is all birch, so it's all hardwood. It's not MDF. Um, and in our experiences, the cabinet can make a big difference just in the way that um, it'll resonate with the, the speakers inside the cabinet. Sometimes the MDF cabinets, just the sort of the sawdust and glue cabinets, they just don't have the same resonance and you don't get quite as tight and punchy and, and clear sound. But these cabinets that are made with um, full-blown solid wood, solid birch, they're, they're tight, they're punchy, and um, great sounding cabinets. So we're going to use this to uh, get our guitar sounds today. And um, a lot of times, this particular cabinet has four 12-inch uh, speakers in it. And um, what you should do always is listen to the cabinet um, before you put microphones in front of the speakers um, because sometimes the speakers sound different. And I can tell you in one case, um, I was working with uh, some musicians and the guitar player didn't realize that one of his speakers was blown. And um, he kept on saying, I can never get a good sound out of the speaker cabinet. And um, I came in and listened to it, and I said, well, that's because one of your speakers <laughs> isn't, isn't working. You've probably been putting microphones in front of a speaker that's not working. So this is our house speaker cabinet. I know which ones sound good, so I know exactly where I'm going to put, put my microphones. But something to keep in mind if you're ever struggling to get a good guitar sound when you're micing up an, uh, a speaker cabin is to go in there and listen to it first and um, make sure that all your speakers are working. Um, so what we're going to do uh, from a microphone standpoint is use an SM57 and a Royer uh, 121 ribbon microphone in conjunction with each other. And um, you can get a really nice blend of sounds when you use these two microphones together. It's one of mine and, and Bob's personal favorite combinations. Um, one thing you got to be careful with is when you're using two microphones together like this, um, you got to worry about the uh, phase relationship between the microphones. So um, one of the easiest ways with these two microphones to know exactly where their diaphragms, well the diaphragm and the ribbon in this case, you want them to be as close to side by side as you can. You don't want one further in front or further back or you want to try and get them as close as you can, otherwise you're going to have some phase relationships, some time differences. So um, the ribbon on this mic is basically in between these two fins. So if you look at this real close, they have these fins on the outside here, and the ribbon element is pretty much right in between. It's in the center, the center of the microphone. So when you're using a 57, the 57, the diaphragm isn't right up here on the grill. The diaphragm is actually a little closer back and it's a little bit closer to where the writing is on this. So if we were to take this cap off, you'd see the diaphragm of the 57 is here. So when you line these up, a lot of times you can put the fin kind of right next to where the writing is 
and you'll know that your, your ribbon and your diaphragm are pretty, pretty doggone close to being next to each other and you shouldn't run into any type of weird phase issues. So um, we'll do that next. The other part about miking up the speaker is that to, um, for the most part, the center of the cone, and we'll see if you can see it in here, this grill is pretty thick. That cap in the center, the dust cap in the center is going to be the brightest part of the speaker. You're going to get your high end from there. The further you move away from the center and you come out towards the edge of the cone, the more low end you're going to pick up. So center of the cone, brighter. Outside of the cone, more low end. So a lot of times what we like to do is take the Royer, the 121, and I like to put that kind of right in the center of the speaker. The Royer has a, a little bit smoother response doesn't sound harsh, but you can get a nice top end by putting this kind of dead center in that dust cone or the, uh, the dust cap there. And then you can blend it in. It looks like we're pretty much there. And then the 57, I like to get it lined up once again, get that fin, the fin of the Royer, and then the writing on that. 57, try and get those lined up with each other, and then as close as you can, and you should get pretty good phase response when you listen. Well, that, looks pretty, that looks pretty good. So you're kind of treating them like one microphone almost, having them as close together as possible. Uh, these are both on axis miking techniques some people also like to mic guitars what's called off axis which you literally take the mic and turn it you can do it you yeah put it back uh so like this would be a lot of engineers like to kind of do this and this is called off axis and uh it's still pointing towards a woofer but not straight on and it actually kind of cuts kind of tailors the high end down some um, with the Royer, the Royer is so warm sounding, uh, and the 57 is so aggressive sounding, uh, it works great. Just these combo of mics right next to each other. And like Eric said, the, the 57 is not dead in the middle. Uh, it's a little off of the dust cap where it's really bright. So now when Eric goes to blend these two mics, he kind of has an EQ built in where if he needs a little more, uh, a little more fullness to the sound. He can push up the Royer. If you know it needs a little more brightness, he can push up the 57. So you can kind of use your faders as an EQ while you're mixing and even during the song. If you get to one part of the song and you want a little more cut, cut through on your guitar, you can just push up that 57 with automation and bring it down later. So uh, really, really cool trick. 